Welcome to the Fastest 30 Minutes. The book of Galatians, chapter number 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ in God the Father. Now, who called him? The Father, the Son, the apostle by, appointed by Jesus Christ. You see, some was sent and some just packed up and went. As old boys used to say back in the day, we'll find out who was called and who was sent and who just packed up and went. Doesn't matter, does it? Who raised him from the dead. So he's given testimony and witness of reaching and to keep reaching for the witness of who called him, Jesus Christ. And all brethren, which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. All of you guys, God has his hand on all of you, on each and every one of us. The Bible says in the last days that mockers would come. Saying, where is the coming of the Lord? Where, you know, things are going the same as it was from the beginning. I heard some this morning, just recently here. And God is not mocked whatsoever man so additionally also reap. God is long-suffering. The heavenly Father waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it. See, in the end, God knew that a few would be saved. That there would come a great falling away from the church. So he said, I know you are of a little strength. I know you can hold on for just a short time. So the percentage of people that are holding on and hoping on to his coming have shrunk dramatically until it's a handful of us that are believing. The rest are wanting to go on. I'm talking about pastors, leaders, apostles, bishops, great ministers. They are not preaching the second coming. You know, hell, fire, damnation. No, because their messages must be motivational, pseudo-mechanized word, you see that only feeds the plan of their agenda. And so what's happening is that the great falling away is purposefully being orchestrated by Satan in the last days to turn people away from the death, the, the power in the resurrection of Christ, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So this is being infiltrated through many forms, through many forms of aliens and otherworldly creatures and God being limited to, you know, just the subject of a man, you know. So the danger that sits here is not knowing that there is a, a wedding plan coming up. There's a wedding feast coming up. The same Jesus, you know, uh, of the marriage supper of Canaan, prepared the disciples. I'm going to go into that later on. And let them know, guys, you know, I'm with you now, but I'm not going to drink no more of the vine until you enter into the kingdom of the Father with me. Why? Because he's married, or his bride, rather, not yet. <laughs> I, hope you don't, I hope you don't divorce us and tell God, no. His bride is being prepared. That's you and I. Now, I'm going to break this stuff down a little bit later on, probably next week, and we're probably going to change the topic and get on to some, you know, other stuff here. But the church must be prepared. The bride must be prepared, okay? Because we don't know what day, uh, time the bridegroom cometh, but he told us when he was going to come. He did, yes. He told us that he was coming as a, a, like a thief in the night, so that's when he's coming. When? like a thief in the night, all right? And you're not supposed to know when because you don't know when the thief going to show up. And 
That's how all our stuff got stolen, remember? Grace be unto you, we're in Galatians chapter number 1, verse number 3. Grace be unto you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. See, what is he saying? Grace be unto you. How many of us hear that? How many of us say that to people? A grace be unto you. And peace from our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Brother, God's grace be unto you, man. God's grace, you know, blessed upon you. And peace be upon you from God and from our Lord and Savior. Yeah, we don't do that. We cuss them out. Who gave himself for our sins, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world? See, he already, he already know. That's why he said that he might deliver us. Because in the last days, many would give heed to seducing spirit, demons of doctrines and fable, and they would not adhere or heed to divine instruction or the truth. So many that are preaching the gospel are preaching for comfort reasons, uh, not the reasons of uh, the cross or the kingdom. You know, if you say for money, that's fine. They all do that, but whatever. But their socialized status is to see their children and their grandchildren. <laughs> they even say it. See their grandchildren grow up. They don't want to hear about Jesus coming back themselves. That's why they don't preach uh, about this getting it right with God and hell and, you know, like they used to. You know, oh, hell, fine brimstone. This It's not that no more. Like, you know, you don't hardly hear that. Okay? Because... God knows that the people mindset, see, he knows that the people mindset can only uh, be held, their attention span is so short. God knows that. And uh, the leaders know that. And that they cannot handle a deep level of truth or correction that comes to the body of Christ that call this mankind to forgive. Now, let me say unto you right quick that living strong viewers, y'all go all the way back, what, five years, seven years, ten years, some of y'all. Y'all go back many moons living strong viewers, seven years at least, you know, the seven years of famine, seven years of Joseph had to store up in Pharaoh's, you know, warehouse. You guys know that we have um, exposed what is being released in the nations in the world today openly, which is hatred and racism, evil and murder. No other ministry, no other pastor or leader in America known in this day and time preached or told you what would happen. Am I being arrogant? Okay. What would happen except it was by Prophet Johnson? A rat ram! A rat ram! And what did they do? They followed up everything. And what do you see now? Right there in your news media. Even commentators, reporters, what are they talking about? Nothing but the continual hatred and racism and evil and murder in America. Why? Because Jesus knew that this, he called it the present evil world, you see. So he knows already. So He's just saying, God, keep them from the evil that's in the world. Don't take them out. I want them to live. I want them to experience me. I want them to know that I died and that I rose again, but, but they're, they're, they're messing up their minds and they're, they're, they're causing them to believe in their own God and, and to blame God for everything else. And I see it happen all the time. If, if God be God, then why don't we, he stop the, 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 the killing of the children and the murder of babies? If God be God, why don't he stop the wars? If God be God, why does he stop the border crossing and all that stuff? And speaking of border crossing, let me say this. God, here it is a Sunday afternoon. Too much is going on, y'all. There is a whole lot that's happening in the world. Let me say this, and I got to say it right quick. I call all of you Mexicans, okay? But you're not. And I don't mean the stereotype, but I don't know what you are. Guatemalans, Hondurans, Chiquot. I don't know. And I don't mean to offend you with what I know, because I don't know. I'm ignorant to what y'all are, you species is are okay so i call i group y'all and say y'all mexicans listen to me you all you um brazilian honduran guatemalan 
Chitanos, all you guys, um, it, 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 Cubans and everything else. Cubans, y'all got it made. Y'all stuck up just like white people. Dirty stuck up Cubans too. Listen to me. I know that y'all hate black people in Mexico. I know that you do because I was there. I, I don't ever want to go to Mexico ever again in my life. Mexico is terrible as far as black people are concerned. But listen to me. Keep coming to America. Y'all are building nice houses. You're building nice trailers. You're building homes. I see y'all. I see y'all. And y'all are putting the people up. Y'all are also in restaurant down on these islands. And y'all are running the restaurant and everything else. Y'all cook, uh, work hard. You, you try to do what's right by the food and everything else. We don't have to worry about y'all being as dirty and everything else because y'all came out of a whole lot of that dirt over there. So you make the American dream all over the world. Now, if you Haitian and all that, y'all stay home because they don't want y'all here. But it, you stay home if you're that color. But here's the thing. All over the world, we have it. America have it. They are working everywhere. The American dream is being fulfilled. They got money. I even had another little Mexican lady snub up her nose at me because she had and got her one of them nice vehicles, and there I am in a raggedy vehicle, and she walk up on there and kick her foot under the thing to raise the trunk up in the air to put her food up in there, and I got to open the back door. And she just looked at me and snub up her nose like, you little poor little black man, look at what I got, look at what you got. My point is this, plain and simple. Y'all keep coming because the American dream is here for y'all. Y'all are serving them and you are doing an excellent job in America as far as restoring this nation. We need about five more million of y'all to cross the border. So y'all come on. Come, they told me, pum 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 me and my drum. I know they can't stand that. I know they can't stand it. That's why I told them. <laughs> That's exactly why I told them. Who gave him self for our sins that he might deliver us, verse number four, Galatians 1, from this present evil world, according to the will of God in our Father. According to the will of God in our Father. Remember, folks, I'm going to tell you again. I pledge allegiance to the nuclear bomb in all of America and to the nations of China, Russia, all the other nations, Korea, in which it served, Pakistan, India, one nation serving under the devil, uh, with, with, uh, with no indivisibility because justice, lady justice is not blind. Her eyes are wide open. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Even, uh, even the um, documentary came on and said that no justice is not blind and, and they telling lies to the American people. We all know that. But remember, folks, when they say that no one is above the law, and you got to remember that when mankind is done with you, such as, and I never did watch this dude from Savannah, this, uh, 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 what is Murdoch, Mur, uh, what, Mike, Mur, 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 I, I don't even know the dude's name, Murdoch, or some, some Murdoch guy. I never did watch this stuff because it was vexing to me. But I seen just on, looking at the weather that they are now taking all of his stuff from his house and selling it to people. When they are finished with you, when they are done with you, you see, remember, everyone is, everyone is above the law because there's no law against the law that serves the law with money and riches. They are above it, okay? There is no other lie that they can tell you. Same way it is with 45. The only way they're going to turn on him is that the people eat him down like a piranha fish turning on its own. Remember, piranha fish is running packs, and that what they do is that they find a victim that's bleeding or whatever, and then they go and eat that thing up, a chicken or whatever, a horse, a cat, dog, a rat, or, or whatever. They go and eat it. But see, when one of them get cut, even though they're in the pack and they're a pack of wolves and they got teeth like razors, when one of them get cut, the other smell the blood. And then all the other piranha fish turn on him and eat him up and kill him. That's the same way it is in your government with 45. Once they smell his blood, that's the only way they'll take him down to take him out like they did the murder, murder, whatever that dude name was. Anyway, that brother. So when you see that and you see what's happening, the truth is what's going to set you free. People are blind in life and in society. We know good and well 
We know doggone well whether the child is born a hermaphrodite or not. With both genital male and female, oh well, so be it. Did God make a mistake or did the mother and father have something to go inherently wrong? How could this child have two sex organized him? And so we got to try to decide to choose this one or that one. And try to have a baby of our own, him, own self. So we deal with all of this stuff and the gender aspect of, of, of this craziness of, of teaching children to, to change their whatever sexual organs at, at six, six, seven, eight years old. This, this is so great. Well, what do you do about something like that? You give that time to advance with a child born double and just to let it see and let it procure a little bit and then you find out in your mind you are a female okay you want to be a girl click then you do the operation and the surgery. You find out just a little bit, because you got time, you got technology. You find, oh, you are a boy. Oh, we're going to seal this part up and make sure this part works for you, okay? And you move on in life, and you, and you, you, you put forth good judgment. But to teach, and, and it's sick, <laughs> it's sick with them dummy dims, and them dummy dims, rogues cans, them low-down line jokers. But here's the deal. There is no way that you are supposed to take, and you know this, men. Men, you know this. You know can't no woman except that Ronda Rousey lady. Go fight that Rousey girl. I tell you what, men, go fight her. She'll whip y'all butt and beat the heck out of y'all. That Rousey girl, that was my girl fighting. And I just, I just like to watch. She was the only one I watched fight in sports arena was that white girl, that Ronda Rousey, because I was scared of her. And she beat up everybody to that girl from over. Anyway, my point is this. Men, you know good and well that you can beat up a woman. If you can't, something's wrong with you. Something is, if you can't be, man, if, <laughs> brother, brother, if you can't beat up your wife, something's wrong. Now, I'm not telling you to beat up. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to love and protect her like all men do. Now, I myself, personally, I can raise my hand after I hit my cousin Lisa with the ashtray at the age of 10 years old for not stop messing with me and would not let me eat my food. My mother came and told my butt up and said, Scott, whatever you do in this life and in this world, don't you ever, ever in your life hit a girl again. Don't you ever lay hands on a girl. And I got to say that I have never hoo -hoo, hit a girl. Praise the Lord, everybody. I, 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 I ain't lying no way, Lord. Praise the Lord. I think I had to hit one one time, you know, but hey, you don't do that. You don't fight women, men. And so we've got to understand what's happening in society. Once they get you down, that's it. They turn on you. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what a pack of wolves do. That's what they do in politics. That's what they do in the world. That's what they do in your family. As long as you got money up, feed them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And next thing you know, get down to your $2 food stamp. What? We ain't studying you. We ain't studying you. You better get your EBT card back, and you ain't getting nothing from us. Sucker. See how it goes? The one true gospel, here it is. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. How, where is all of this other stuff coming from? Why are not we not reaching and pressing toward the mark of the price? Because we're being bombarded with all of these innuendos about some other God or some, or we being God or whatever the case may be. Oh, God help us all. So, Another gospel is that which is other than Christ, the Lord and Savior. And you say, well, Prophet Johnson, what about all them people you talked about the other day? Well, folks, you're in internet time. Buddha know Jesus. Muhammad know Jesus. How Krishna know Jesus. All them, all them, they, they hear about Jesus. They know about him now. They know about the Lord and Savior. But you see, they, they could have it in another form. You see? So you got to understand that. Well, it is coming one for on the English version, Christian version. Well, you never know now. He could have came over here. <laughs> Might have been a little fat Buddha, a little Christian, you know. Who knows? Oh, boy, I tell y'all what. Oh, we judge everybody and bunch of hypocrites, lying. Boy, <laughs> Christian. Yeah, Lord Jesus. Why did you have to call us Christians? Why? Could you have to just... It, 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 which... And, 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 and I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. 
<coughs> which is not another gospel, which means it really don't exist. Really, it's nothing, really. And, and he, said, he said, which is not another, but there'll be some that trouble you. Of course there could <laughs> be people that's going to trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So what's happening is that the enemy is coming in, bombarding, perverting the gospel of Christ, trying to break us down, trying to turn us away from the faith. But the Lord said, if I had not shortened days, the very elect would have been deceived. But thank God, he's got a time clock that's moving like never before. God help us all. And it's happening right now. They don't, they don't, they don't. They, they don't care about God. Christians do not care about no Jesus Christ except in name only to use God. They don't care about no covenant. You see, Jesus knew. And I'll deal with this a little bit later on. He said, I'm going to marry you. And when I give traditionally Canaan as the marriage supper, the man take the cup and give it to the woman if she accepts and drink. That means she have accepted him. Jesus said, I won't drink no more. Until I have you at my wedding feast and I pass the cup and you accept it, you see. So what you call in today's time church folks are Christians, those are the 85% that are formally, traditionally holding on. The other 15% like myself and others, you viewers, you are looking for that hope and that prize. If you are not, and you're not preparing, and you're not getting yourself ready like the bridegroom and having your awe feel like the five wise against the five foolish because you don't know what that time that shofar is going to blow and the father wake up Jesus and say, Jesus, get up. It's time to go get your bride. And Jesus going to come and look at us, come up hither, the dead in Christ going to rise first, rise first. We that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air because the bride represents lifting her up off the ground to take her into the marriage house. And he built onto his father's house. And Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. So in the days of Canaan, the father that was marrying the bride would take the bride and build a house onto his father's house. Of based upon the year's separation as the bride would prepare for the groom to come back, not knowing what time of the night or hour he would come. Her and her bridemaids would be ready, dressed in their clothes. Okay, why? Because it's getting closer to that time. So what is God doing? I go to prepare a place for you that where I am you may be also for in my father's house of many mansions. What did he do? He built your mansions onto his father's house. So he's coming back to get you and I to take us there. But he know that the church is weak and God know that the time must be shortened because the church don't have the strength to come back. So he's going to have to shorten the time. Okay, because your revivals are being challenged temporarily. Once a wave break out, something go through. People feel emotionally happy, whatever. It's broken up. So then what, where are we not right now? In the governance of control based upon religion and society in a Sunday service. In a leader that makes you feel good and motivates you. But not preparing you to accept and to enter in to that wedding feast. He, they're not getting us ready. No, stop lying. You know good and don't go well. Them pastors ain't telling y'all clean up y'all life. No good and doggone well, he ain't. No, he ain't. I ain't telling you to get it together. I ain't telling you to stop lying, stop cursing, stop backstabbing, stop hypocrite, stop this, stop. I ain't telling you about no hell. 
getting up in there motivation you up. I see you blessed. I hear the Lord saying in three days, I said it, he going to open the door for you. Sister, didn't you, what? ain't you the one that I seen over there at Miss Susie's house? At the, yeah, that was me. I thought that was you. That was your little boy. Yeah, God going to use him in a special way. I shut up. I've been praying for little uh, baby devil hell. I've been praying for devil hell, baby. Oh, that boy raised more hell than anybody. God going to use him. Sha la la la. See? Love it, don't we? Great and swelling words. I sit back and I just say, <laughs> boy, I marvel. Teach real good now. Teaching them, senior citizen. Yes, sir. Teaching them, but they ain't learning nothing when it comes down to truth, salvation, love, hatred, racism, how to treat people right. Lord, have mercy. Listen, boy, let me be quiet. Let, I don't want to say that right now. I'm being nice. Here it is. But though we are an angel from heaven, but we, though we are an angel from heaven. So, so, now come on now. So, angels from heaven. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I wish I had time. I ain't got no time to talk about that. They everywhere, y'all. How many times I got to tell y'all about all these worlds and all these, I ain't got no time for that. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. If anybody come to you telling you, you ain't got to have Jesus Christ. You, ain't don't worry about God. The Bible says, that, let that person be a curse. See, because he's preaching some alien gospel or some gospel from another world that is not ordained of God, misleading you, only to deceive you. As we said before, I say unto you now, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that you have received, let him be a curse. Said it twice. Twice. Not, uh-uh. The Bible don't say nothing twice. Uh-uh. No. See, God trying to tell you, those people are cursed. You got people that are preaching the gospel of Christ and it's another Christ a money Christ a healing Christ it's not a loving a forgiving a saving a repentant Christ this Christ won't bless you to receive abundance a whole lot of money this Christ come to my healing service all he want to do is heal your body up so we can get your money Christ Jesus the doctor Christ Jesus the lawyer I think that's the wrong Christ somewhere. We're missing something, isn't we? Sure, God used doctors and lawyers, right? <laughs> Woo! For I do, for, for do I now persuade men or God? Who am I? Who am I? Who are you trying to impress? Men or God? Who are you trying? Do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ in clothing, but I certify, hallelujah, say it again, prophet, who are you persuading? If I'm out to please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And that's where they are everywhere I got to go, y'all. But I certify, put it on paper, sign it in blood, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. That's why they don't want the truth and the truth teller. Because the gospel is after man. I've been there. This is it. For I neither received of for I neither received it of man. Ha! Huh? Then go to your seminary school, even though I went. It's not where I got it from. They got mad because I 
got my associates and walked out the door and said, y'all can't teach me nothing. You can't teach me nothing. I sat under white, racist, Christian, hypocritical leaders. Son was a cult. Tell me about them. I, I didn't sit under their coat. I know some other people went under that. And, and, you know. I'm gone, Captain. Neither was I taught of it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. That's where I got it from. As a little boy, little bitty boy, Mississippi. That's where it all started at. Little old bitty boy. That's my time. I'd like to thank you for yours. Y'all going to have a great weekend. Repeat after me and say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins, and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody's got a special blessing. I can't call your name out because I don't want the other people getting mad at me. But I wish I could tell you who you are. You got a special blessing. Watch it happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, that's me. All right, I'm talking to you, but you don't know it. Look. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow night. We're getting ready to start with a new topic. I love y'all too. Have a good night. Bye.